Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. My wife may have cheated with my coworker. Note, if you're familiar with the first part of the story, you can use the timestamp and skip to the next update. Hello, everybody. I can't believe I'm here, but I don't know what else to do. I love my wife, but I'm really scared that she's doing something behind my back. I can't talk to friends and family because it's too embarrassing and messed up. I think my coworker may have banged my wife, and it's looking like that may be true. I, male 36, met my wife, female 32, in a mall in our city back in 2014. My wife, let's call her Gabby, was in the food court in the line when I saw her. It's a funny thing. I was actually trying to go to another restaurant, but the line was too long. Getting in line at the restaurant where she was, I saw her standing at the front, and when she looked at me, I couldn't believe how gorgeous she was. When she saw me, she laughed and said she wasn't in line for food. Gabby said her cousin worked there, and she was waiting for her to come out. I was happy as hell that she spoke to me because I couldn't figure out what to say to her. Thanks to that, I was able to break the ice with being humorous, and we talked while she waited for her cousin. I could see I was definitely making a good first impression with her. I asked her while she waited for her cousin did she want me to buy her some food, and she said she wanted a strawberry lemonade instead. After buying it, we talked some more and I continued to be flirtatious and funny with her. When her cousin came out, I asked for her number and she gave it to me before they left. After that, I did everything I could to sweep her off her feet. After going on some dates, events, and me and my friends hanging with her and her friends, we made it official we were dating. In 2017, me and Gabby had gotten married. After having three kids, we had our own family. After having two girls and our son being the middle child, we grew into being great parents for our kids. It wasn't easy, but we gave up always going out to clubs and concerts, but we still found time here and there to have fun. Our nightlife was definitely cut in half for sure. I was happy to have Gabby as my wife, and I felt very lucky. She had a great character, but she was so gorgeous that my friends even gave me props. Gabby is Cuban and looks like a cross between the girl who played Wonder Woman and Salma Hayek. She is curvaceous, has tattoos on her arms, and always has a ponytail. You'd know her for sure by her always wearing a type of ponytail, especially in her selfies. We make good money since I work as a maintenance man. Gabby and her sister are interior decorators and make good money too. Technically, her sister is the interior designer. Gabby just jumped on board when she saw it was getting successful. I love my job and I've worked here for seven years but I've never thought someone here would get to my wife. The troll came last Wednesday. There's a guy that works in the shipping area. Let's call him Daryl. I'm not really friends with Daryl, but he's an acquaintance to me and we talked during lunch. The most time I hung out with him was probably when we were shooting dice in the parking lot at the job. We only hang at lunch and talk about the basketball games. One weekend, my car had brake problems and I couldn't drive it to work. So my wife drove me there and picked me up after. The first time she accidentally came too early and had to wait about 30 minutes for me to come out. When I came out, I saw her laughing and talking to Daryl and a girl that works in the office. Let's call her Brianna. After introducing her as my wife, we had small talk for a little while and we left. Looking back, I think that is where it all began. I think Daryl may have gotten to my wife and it started that week when she had to come and pick me up from work. When I got off work, I would see my wife hanging with Daryl and Brianna. They would be in the office hanging out listening to rap music on Daryl's Beats by Dre that's connected to his phone. Gabby said she liked talking to Brianna and would hang out in the office with her and Daryl. I knew Brianna and Daryl lived close to each other so they were good friends and that's why it didn't really bother me to see him around them as well. Since that week, Gabby would come to my job to talk and hang with Daryl and Brianna. Since Brianna was supposed to be Gabby's friend, I didn't mind her visiting sometimes or talking on the phone. But Daryl being around talking to Gabby was something I overlooked. My wife gets a lot of attention, especially on Instagram, so I always tried to keep myself in check, even when I saw Gabby and Daryl talking without Brianna around. Jumping into conclusions would just piss Gabby off, and we'd be arguing in Spanish every day. Last Wednesday was when my fears came up about my wife possibly cheating on me. One day, when leaving my job, I was telling a friend at work goodbye. He was on the phone at the time, and he said goodbye as well. I stopped when he told the person on the other line that it was me telling him goodbye, and I was curious because he said my name like this person knew me. I asked him who he was talking to, and he just smiled and said it was an old coworker of ours. Telling me to wait, he said this person wanted to talk to me really quick. Giving me the phone, I was actually happy to hear from this guy. Talking to my old coworker, let's call him Tyrell, we caught up since I don't know why he left. He said his brother worked in a warehouse in Atlanta, and Tyrell said he moved down there since his brother promised him a job with him. 
Then he had decided to rub it in by saying how now he makes more than us in a playful way. After catching up, he said he wanted to ask me for my phone number because he wanted to talk to me about something. I said, sure. And he told me to DM him my number on Facebook. I said, okay. And I gave my friend his phone back. After sending him the number, he called immediately. I didn't even make it to my car yet. Picking up, I asked him what was up. He asked me, was I in the car? And I said, yeah. He said not to drive yet because he really had to tell me something. This really sounded strange as hell. So I asked him what he was talking about. He said, I can't tell nobody you told me this. And I agreed. He asked me, was Gabby still coming up to my job? And it surprised me. I said, yeah. And he asked me, was Daryl still talking to Gabby? And I said, yeah. And he was making me nervous asking about them. He told me he didn't want to start anything, but he thinks Daryl banged my wife. He said since he doesn't work with us anymore, he didn't care, so he wanted me to know this. Hearing this sent a big freaking chill down my spine. I asked him how he knows this, and he said he had saw them. When he worked with us, Tyrell was a floor leader, so he moved between the departments. He said while walking, he always saw Gabby and Daryl talking to each other, and he told our coworkers he really wanted to bang Gabby, and he said he would always make comments about her butt. I asked Tyrell when he would see them together, and he said it was almost an hour before lunch. He said he would see her talk to Brianna sometimes, but he saw her talking to Daryl more. Tyrell said even though it looked like he was flirting with Gabby, he didn't know if something might be happening until she visited him on Saturdays when Daryl's department had to work overtime. This was a surprise to me because I almost never worked overtime. It didn't make sense why she would be there. I asked Tyrell was he sure she was there on Saturdays, and he said he was definitely sure. He said he was pretty sure Daryl might be banging her when she had visited one Saturday. Since there's not a lot to do on a Saturday, they had a lot of free time, and Daryl would have his Beats by Dre music speaker playing. Even though Gabby was there hanging out, this was normal to Tyrell. But after a while, he came back and said he heard loud Spanish music playing. Looking in, Tyrell said things were getting sexual with Gabby and the guys. He said Daryl had Gabby by her neck while she twerked for him. My wife wasn't exactly bootylicious, but she had enough that she could twerk if she wanted. I froze when Tyrell told me this. I asked was he sure, and he said he was absolutely sure, and that he's not blind. He said everybody watched as she bounced it for him, and he even lifted her shirt to show her butt and her leggings. I asked him did she try to stop Daryl, and he said no. He said all she did was laugh and twerk for him while he had her by her neck. He said she looked like she was trying to win a contest. I couldn't believe what I was hearing from Tyrell. He said he was sorry and I need to keep my wife from him. He said that includes Brianna as well. I said thanks for telling me all this and hung up not long after. I felt very humiliated by this. Driving back home, my head was racing like crazy. What was worse, Gabby twerking for Daryl had to have been seven or eight months ago. Who knows what's been going on ever since then. They probably took it to his place and she did more than twerk there. I had to ask Gabby what was going on and see if she'd be honest with me. Getting back home, my wife was on the phone with her mom. After small talk, I asked her, did she meet with Brianna today? And she said, yeah. I asked her, did she see Daryl as well? And she said, no. I told her I was actually surprised because they seemed like the three musketeers. She told me Daryl really doesn't be around that much and it'd just be her and Brianna, which even I know is total bull. After that, my wife just walked past me and into the kitchen for her phone and started texting probably her friends. I couldn't believe my wife flat out lied to me about her relationship with Daryl. Even I noticed how much he was around her and I was hurt by what was looking obvious right now. After that, all I could do is watch her make dinner for our kids and feel sad what's going on right now. I'm really depressed and my head got me in a combination of rage and tearing up. Right now I need proof that something's going on, but it's going to be really hard since it involves people that work with me. I don't want to lose my job and I can't use what Tyrell said because it was just twerking and that's not good enough for divorce. Besides, they'll both just lie and say it didn't happen. Plus, my wife can say she was bringing Daryl lunch or something, and the old lady that's the security guard would let her in. I have to assume my wife cheated on me. My wife had secretly met up with Daryl and twerked for him, and that was eight months ago. So much time had passed, and there's no telling what happened since then. I need to know how to get actual proof so I can use it in divorce if everything is true. I need to be careful because I don't want to lose my job, and I know her family will attack me if I don't get evidence. We'll update if I figure out what to do. Update 1. I want to thank everybody for letting me know how to find out about what's going on with my wife and my coworker, who I think she's cheating on me with. It helped me especially since I couldn't go to family and friends because of the possible embarrassment, and it's getting worse all the things I've been noticing. 
and it's definitely possible my coworker banged my wife. To bring people up to speed on this, my wife, Gabby, had to pick me up from work because my car needed new brakes. Waiting for me to get off work, Gabby met and became friends with the girl that works in the front office, named Brianna, and a coworker who worked in shipping named Daryl. When I got off the floor, I had always saw them listening to rap music and talking. After being good friends with them, my wife would come to my job on her day off and hang with them around their lunch. However, a couple weeks ago, I got a call from an old coworker that devastated me. This guy used to work with us named Tyrell and said Daryl might have gotten to my wife. He said he saw them talking privately and it looked like they were flirting. He said this would happen an hour before Daryl's lunch and it was very suspicious. What was worse was when he said that when he and Daryl would work overtime on Saturdays, Gabby would come to visit them. He said at first he wasn't going to say anything, but one Saturday he saw something that made him tell me after Tyrell left. He said when he went to the shipping dock, he heard Spanish music playing. He said looking in, he saw my wife's dancing and twerking for Daryl. He said at first they were just playing around, but then they got sexual and aggressive. He said Gabby allowed him to grab her by the neck and lift her shirt up to see her butt. He said at first they were playing around, but he could tell that it was getting serious, especially how they looked at each other. At first I was making excuses for my wife, asking him if he was sure it was her. He shot that down by saying he was definitely sure it was her, especially since Gabby was Cuban, had tattoos on her arms, and she always wore a ponytail. Tyrell said after he saw that, he left to go home. I just couldn't believe what he was telling me. Not only is it bad that my wife was twerking on Daryl, but this happened eight or nine months ago. So much time had passed by and who knows what she was doing now for Daryl. I'm grateful Tyrell told me about this, but I think he might be too late telling this information. I wish he would have been a man and told me at the time, but it looked like, thanks to him, Daryl definitely got to my wife. All because he didn't want to snitch on Daryl. When I got home, I asked Gabby about her friendship with Daryl. She said she talks to Daryl sometimes, but he don't really be around and she usually just talks to Brianna. I knew this was BS because sometimes I saw them myself. Thanks to Tyrell, I see how this game of hers is being played. She was using her friendship with Brianna as an excuse to really see Daryl. After talking to Tyrell and hearing Gabby lie about her and Daryl, I began snooping on my wife around the house. I can't get in her iPhone because she has a hard passcode and she always is on it, gossiping with her mom and her sister every day. Instead, I would eavesdrop on her conversations and the ones she had late at night bothered me. She would go on the back porch and talk and I would go out our side door to listen to who she was talking to. After listening, I could tell she was probably talking to Daryl. I would hear her say, Stop, you're crazy. Or, Yes, we had fun. At a certain club in the suburban area of where we live. I even heard her say, I can't go over there. I'm sure there meant over to his house, but just hearing one side, I couldn't be all the way sure. When she came in, I asked her who she was talking to, and she said her sister, Brianna, or somebody else. All the giggling and whispering told me it was total BS. It was then that I really must have been blind before Tyrell called because I saw nothing but red flags afterwards. I never saw her without her phone now. She don't talk to me and says she's busy. And when I wanted to sleep with her, she found it hilarious and said she didn't want to do it with our kids in the house. When I asked when that has ever stopped us, Gabby would say, just leave her alone and I was crazy. She said, besides, she wasn't in the mood. All this stuff before Tyrell called and after is not looking like my wife has been faithful. Why did I ever think all this was normal? Last Saturday, I think I caused her to miss a chance to be with Daryl and she was pissed. After I got off work, Gabby called me while I was driving home. She said she planned to go out again and that I had to cook for the kids. I immediately assumed she was trying to meet with Daryl and lied, saying I was going to run errands before coming home. She said she was already getting ready to leave and I said tell her sister to watch the kids already knowing she couldn't. After trying to guilt me into forcing her to stay home, I told Gabby I'm allowed to go out and do things too and I may not be back till later. Gabby said, whatever, and she hung up on me. Later that night, she had an attitude with me, and when I said just two words to her, she just blew up on me. She said I ruined her night, and I said I didn't care. I told her me needing to run errands was more important than her just hanging out. Gabby said I didn't say anything about running errands when I told her she didn't say anything about going out. When I asked her who she was hanging out with, she said to just forget it. After getting out of the shower, I noticed she was outside on the porch talking on her phone. Seeing as she looked irritated, I'm sure she was talking about me. However, a couple of days ago took a turn for the worst. After I got off work, that night Gabby cooked dinner. She came in the bedroom where I was looking at some new Jordans on my phone and told me dinner was ready. When I came in the dining room, she was all dressed up, getting ready to leave. I asked her where she was going, 
She said she was going out with some friends and that I had to watch the kids. I asked who she was going out with and Gabby just said, her friends again. I told her she can't just up and leave and she told me to stop trying to control her. After that, she walked out the door with an attitude. I was super pissed because I knew what this was about. She was still mad about the Saturday where she couldn't see Daryl and she was obviously sad about it since then. My wife didn't come back till about 2.30 in the morning. That whole night I was texting her and her only reply was, please stop texting me. And I was pissed. When she finally came in, I was playing our son's PlayStation and when I saw her, we started arguing. I asked her why she came home so late. She just said she was hanging out with her friends and I wasn't trying to hear any of that. I told her I was supposed to be in bed and here I was waiting up for her to come back home. She said I never did complain when she got in late in the past and said I was always with her so that BS argument don't work. She cursed me out and said I was practically trying to control her and I said that's bull. After a while, our son came out to see what all the yelling was about and asked what was wrong. After that, Gabby said she wasn't arguing with me anymore and stormed into the bedroom. Seeing the video game on, my son asked if he can play, and I told him just for a little while, then he had to go back to sleep. After agreeing, he started playing on the game and I wanted to continue to argue with Gabby. I wasn't going to let her gaslight me about being some kind of controlling husband, she was the one coming in late. I always tried to be calm, but my suspicion got the better of me. Coming in at 2am was disrespectful, especially after how she left. After our argument, I went into our bedroom to continue arguing about when she left. When I walked into the bedroom, I was going to argue, but then I had stopped mid-sentence at what I saw. When I walked in the room, my wife was getting undressed and it looked like she was wearing a black string as underwear. I guess my wife thought I would still be with our son because she looked surprised when I walked in. My wife just stood there as she was wearing a piece of string and I saw her for the thought she now was. After looking at me for a brief second, she shot me a look that said, if you ask me, we're just going to argue. After she grabbed her pajamas off the bed, she decided to go in the bathroom to change. I couldn't believe what I just saw, and I can't lie, it stopped me in my tracks, and I was crushed. I decided I was going to be sleeping on the couch because it was going to be awkward after that. My brain couldn't function after seeing that. I never saw my wife wearing a piece of thong or underwear like that. It was practically her bare bottom and a black piece of string. To be fair, Gabby does have sexy underwear, but it's been forever since she wore them. When we go on vacation, she likes to wear sexy bikinis, but it would be for Instagram. Even with that being the case, the string she was wearing was more like something on Worldstar. At this point, I've seen my wife and is definitely being super suspicious and secretive. When I came on here, I saw everybody say I should record her doing or saying very incriminating crap, so I'm already acting on it. I ordered me a voice activated recorder device and I plan on putting it in her car. I asked a friend of mine, can I use his address for the delivery? And he said yes, without any questions. I'll pick it up when he gets it in the mail. The last thing I need is for her to see the package and question me about what it is. I'm ready to blow this thing wide open and I don't care what it costs. Thanks to Tyrell, a lot of suspicions are on the money. I'll try an update, but I should be able to if I stop being confrontational and act as normal as my emotions will let me be. Update 2 Thanks to everybody that's helped me with what's been going on with me and my wife. I've been getting a lot of support for seeing if my wife has cheated on me and it's been helpful to hear. This has been a terrible time and conversations here was needed. It also helped me be more strong and smart about finding out the truth. I really appreciate the support on this. However, the advice I got here has been kind of divided on how to deal with this. Some people said I should take the evidence and proof and use it against her. Other people said I should take the red flags and blow up the situation. I was trying to figure out what to do with this, but my wife forced my hand today. And yes, my wife broke her vows. To bring certain people up to speed, my wife, Gabby, had to pick me up from work last year because my car broke down. While waiting for me to get off work, Gabby became friends with a girl that works in the office named Brianna and a coworker named Daryl. They would talk and listen to rap music while she waited for me to come out to leave. It got to the point where after my car was fixed, she'd come by on their lunch when she didn't have to work with her sister. However, very recently, I got a call from my old friend who used to work with us named Tyrell that Daryl and Gabby have been meeting up secretly. He said that they would be acting very inappropriate with each other he said she would even come and visit him on Saturdays when they worked overtime. Terrell said one day they were in the back playing music and he saw her twerking for Daryl. He said when Daryl lifted up my wife's shirt to see her butt and was grabbing her by the neck, he might have banged her. Thanks to my wife having tattoos, always wearing a ponytail, and being Spanish, it was super easy for Tyrell to identify her. He said she would bring him lunch and they would hang around and practically BS since there was no real work on Saturdays. Seeing as I never work overtime, I was shocked to know she's been up there. 
After coming home, I had asked Gabby about her and Daryl's friendship, and she said she really doesn't have a friendship with Daryl. This made me mad because this was a total lie, especially since everybody would see them together during lunch. After this lie, I had snooped on my wife to see what I was going to find. I know Gabby and Brianna are friends, but Daryl was always around too. After snooping, I saw so many red flags. She would hang out all night and say she was with friends. She would go on the back porch and talk on the phone, and she'd spontaneously leave the house and not say where she was going. The worst was eavesdropping on her while she was on the phone. Gabby would be giggling, saying things like, You're crazy, or I can't come over tonight. When I asked who she was talking to, she'd say her sister or Brianna. Being at work was felt awkward too, because I didn't know how nice everybody was to me until now. Thanks to Tyrell calling and telling me about this, the information was like a master key for me since they're not even aware that I was told about this. My only real regret is that the info is 8 months old, and so much time has passed since then. I was so focused on going to work and raising my kids that I should have paid attention to what was going on. Tyrell showed me that I clearly had on rose-tinted glasses at the time. Gabby used her friendship with Brianna as a front to see Daryl. Since those eight months, my wife definitely changed. She was very secretive and only held conversations with her friends and only spoke to me when she had to. She would get all dressed up more often, and when she was getting undressed after hanging out till two in the morning, saw she was wearing a black string as underwear. Seeing her wear this concerned me because she never wears that type of underwear. She would wear sexy bikinis when we were on vacation, but usually that was for pictures on Instagram to show off. Everybody knows the string type underwear is not something you wear, but show off to somebody. Seeing this caused me to freeze in my tracks, and I just walked out of the room, and not bother arguing about it. Thanks to Tyrell, my world is crazy right now, and the writings are clearly on the wall. Before Tyrell said anything, I always tried not to be the jealous type. Gabby is very pretty, and she always gets compliments. She likes sharing pictures on Instagram, and she gets a lot of attention there. A lot of comments on her pictures be inappropriate, and she would get likes even if the picture is from a year ago. It's not easy for a jealous person to be with a wife who has thousands of guys on her page. I always knew about this and tried to be understanding, but this was a very real situation and I might have felt back too hard on this because we've gotten married. I felt like this BS was going to change and it's time to get proof of all this. After buying a voice activated recording device, I planned on getting proof and if it was real, I wanted a divorce from her. After getting a voice activated recorder, I rode with her to the supermarket, see if I could get her to treat me better. If there was a problem with our relationship, I thought maybe we could fix it, and she'd leave Daryl alone. I told Gabby that her going out with friends is fine, but as a parent, she still had a responsibility to her family. Gabby said she was a grown woman, and I was being controlling to her. She said she had the right to go out with her friends and not be in the house or working all the time. I told her I know she likes to have fun, but it was getting too spontaneous, and that she wouldn't tell me when and where she was going. Gabby agreed and said she was going to be mindful of me and her family. After that, she was actually more mindful about my feelings and I felt like we could talk further about us. But that ended with a phone call from Daryl a couple days ago, I guess. At the beginning, I didn't know how to approach this, but this afternoon she forced my hand. Earlier in the week, Gabby said all my kids wanted to watch a Pixar movie with their big cousins this Saturday. She said she was going to take them so they could all watch the movie together. I thought this was great because it was nice that she was spending more time with the kids. When they left, a couple hours later, I got a call from my nephew. He said he heard we had a certain video game he wanted to play, asked can he come over after the movie. I told him that if Gabby was going to bring him back home, then he could come over and play the game. He was excited and said when Gabby came and picked him up after the movie, he would ask her. When he said this, he completely confused me. I told him I thought Gabby was going to watch the movie with them, and he said Gabby told them she was just going to drop them off. I slept in a little this morning, so I thought I was just hearing him wrong. I know for a fact Gabby said she was watching the movie with the kids, and I knew this was now a lie. It was then that I just remembered that it was a Saturday, and Tyrell said that Gabby would be with Daryl during overtime. Looking at the time, the guys would definitely still be there if they had to work this Saturday. Calling my wife, she didn't pick up the phone, which had really pissed me off. After that, I called my job. Getting security's extension, I asked the lady, was the guys still working? She said yeah, and I hung up really wondering was she actually there with Daryl? After that I got in my car and decided to drive out to my job knowing I should make it there before they left. Driving there, all I did was say, stupid B, for what she was putting me through. I didn't know what to think, but I was in a real rage already. We've had this talk and I thought she understood. 
I was onto her this time and I wasn't letting this go, especially since she lied to me. If Daryl was banging my wife, I don't care anymore. I pulled into the parking lot and searched for her car. I immediately found it and I was angry already. I walked in and made my way down to the shipping dock where Daryl worked. When I walked through the double doors, Daryl's crew jumped up surprised to see me. They had their jackets on, so it looked like they were getting ready to leave until they saw me. Looking around, I didn't see Daryl or Gabby, so I knew they had to be in the trucker's lounge room. When I was making my way back there, one of the crew tried to stop me and tell me I didn't belong in the building. I told him he better get out of my face or I was going to F him up, and I definitely wasn't playing around with him. He tried to play the tough guy BS with me, but didn't budge, so I knew he didn't want to fight. Not wasting any more with him, I made my way to the trucker's lounge where they had to be at. The trucker's lounge used to be a small area where the truckers would wait for their trucks to be loaded up. A few years ago, they made a new rule that said all truck drivers had to stay in their trucks and wait until they were given their paperwork. This was supposed to prevent theft, but I didn't know who would want to steal anything they were shipping. The room was small and only two vending machines that didn't work anymore. I knew I would definitely find them in there, and hearing Daryl groaning, I was right. Staying close to the wall, I looked in and couldn't believe what I saw. Daryl was banging my wife and I couldn't believe what I saw. It was bad enough that I saw Daryl sitting on a couch with his shirt open and his pants and underwear down, but he held my wife's face in his crotch. He looked like some dark lord in the mountains after he grabbed a village woman and made her slowly work him. He looked down at my wife while she was on her knees, sucking obediently. Reaching into my pocket, I pulled out my phone. I had a feeling I was going to need it, so I pulled it out and started recording. Gabby was clearly too busy to notice and Daryl was just watching her and I got at least seven good seconds of them doing this. After getting some proof, I jumped out at them screaming, F you, witch! Daryl looked surprised to see me and Gabby gave me a super annoyed look on her face. Looking up at me, she asked what I was doing there, very agitated. I just screamed at her, F you, witch! This is how you treat me? She said, Can you please just go away? Mind you, she's still holding him in her hand. I said F to both of them, and she's just hands over her face saying, Oh my god! It was real surprising to me because she didn't seem embarrassed about getting caught. She seemed more embarrassed about how I was acting in front of Daryl. After that, I just called her everything under the sun and all she did was roll her eyes and beg me to leave them alone and just leave. She really seemed to just want me gone and it didn't matter to her that our marriage was over. It seemed like she was just saying, oh well, and that angered me even more. After calling her countless names, all she would do is say, please leave, and I don't care. I yelled, how could she do that to me after claiming she effing loved me? And she yelled back, I don't love you like that, okay? Hearing that almost dropped me, and she told me to just leave again. I told her I wanted a divorce, and she said, okay, in a frustrated tone. After that, I just left the warehouse, got in my car, and drove home. After getting home, I was absolutely furious. I punched the walls and was cursing at the top of my lungs. I can't believe she would do this to me. She was definitely a person I didn't know anymore. I was definitely done with this BS she was giving me. As it stands, she still hasn't come back and I don't even know where she is. I bet she's with her sister and now has to tell her about the situation. Whatever comes next, I have the evidence that she cheated and is absolutely bulletproof. I plan on using it a lot in different ways, especially in the divorce. It definitely shows how she is irresponsible and uncaring about her own marriage. It sucks to say, but I probably shouldn't have needed Tyrell to tell me about this since the signs were there. She only loved the things I did for her, and that's why she married me. Gabby didn't want love, she just loved to be desired. And since Daryl was attractive to her and he desired her, he banged her. A relationship like this always fails because women like her always go back to who they actually are. I just bought a voice activated recorder I only used once. It seemed all I needed was a guy who didn't work with us anymore. Final update. Hello everybody. I want to thank everybody for their positive messages and support. I can't explain how you made me understand what my wife was doing to me and the best ways to handle it. So many people asked for an update to see how I was doing and right now it's the worst because I feel betrayed and so angry. People here seem to think that I was afraid to go and confront my wife and that's not the case. After I found out my wife cheated on me, I made serious moves to talk to a lawyer and divorce her. This is my last post about this because everything now is going to be busy with court situations and me being with my family and my three kids. And also because me and my wife had a big fallout and I knew it was inevitable. To recap about the situation, my wife Gabby had to pick me up from work about a year ago because my car needed repairs. Coming to my job to pick me up for the week, she made friends with a girl that worked in the office named Brianna and a co-worker named Daryl, who worked on the shipping dock. At first I didn't mind and they hung out during breaks. 
Then they started hanging out outside of work. At first I thought Gabby only hung out with Brianna, but I was wrong. I got a call from an old coworker named Tyrell that Gabby hung out with Daryl more than she did Brianna. Not only did he hang out with my wife, but he told other guys on the shipping dock that he wanted to bang Gabby. He said he would see them and it looked like he was always flirting with her. Tyrell said he got suspicious. Tyrell said they started being around each other too much and one day, when they worked overtime, he had caught her twerking for Daryl. I really couldn't believe what he was saying. I asked him was he sure it was her and thanks to her being Cuban, having tattoos and her always wearing a ponytail, he had described Gabby perfectly. After this I did some snooping and that's when I saw all the red flags. All the hanging out with me, her always having her phone and her deciding to not acknowledge me as her husband was proving what Tyrell said to be looking very true. People here said that my wife would slip up and just wait and they were right about this. It's like Tyrell gave me the clear path and all I had to do was wait until the path cleared up. This happened when Gabby said she was going to watch a Pixar movie with her kids and their big cousins this past Saturday. This turned out to be some BS by her when my nephew who was at the movies said she was going to come and pick them up after the movie. I was surprised because I knew for a fact that she had said she was going to watch the movie. After hanging up with him, it only took me a little while to figure out where she went. Tyrell said Gabby would come and visit Daryl at work while they had to work overtime. This was the times when Tyrell said she would be twerking for Daryl and spend the end of the shift with him. After getting up and driving all the way to the job, I made my way into the building. Her car was there, so I knew she was with Daryl. Making my way to the small trucker's lounge, I knew I would find them there, and after I stopped to take a peek in, Gabby was on all fours with Daryl in her mouth. Gabby twerking for Daryl was about eight months ago, though now he was holding my wife's head in his crotch. Grabbing my phone, put the camera lens out far enough to record them and got about seven seconds of this evidence of the truth. After this, I confronted them both in real fury I never put on anybody before this. When I exploded on my wife, it hurt me because she seemed annoyed that they were being interrupted. Daryl threw his hand up looking more shocked than my wife. She asked me to please go away and that really pissed me off. I asked her point blank how could she do something like that and she yelled at me that she doesn't love me like that and to please just leave. When she told me that, I swear I almost fainted. After that, I had to pick up the pieces and drive all the way back home. After going off in a rage, I managed to calm myself down. I knew it was time to accept what happened and that our marriage was over. She said she didn't love me like that. Then what did she love me as, if at all? It was then that I had to accept who I really was to her. Gabby was the type that if somebody was to marry her, she had to be allowed to act entitled. I paid whatever to keep her happy and she made me believe that's what a good husband was. She acted like I was lucky because she was a trophy especially with the attention she gets. I believed it, especially since she was a good mom, and at first, she was a good wife. She didn't love me, just the attention and love I worked hard to give her. That was also a problem as well. Gabby was always an attention seeker. This had to be the reason she loved Snapchat and Instagram. She had a large number of followers, and 80% of them were men. Even that was bad, the comments were worse. That's why I had to have thick skin being with her, especially when she took pictures in bikinis when we go out to Vegas, and when we went to Jamaica. It was clear now she wouldn't change. Even though she found somebody who would take care of her, it didn't matter when she found somebody she would found attractive. And he treated her like how she was supposed to be treated. Now that it was all over, I had to face the music and I called my siblings to tell them everything. I didn't want to do this, but it was definitely time. The first person I called was my big brother, let's call him Ricky, and ranted about what happened, using as many curse words as I could. After asking me was I at home, he said he had to make a quick run, but he was going to stop by afterwards. After that, I called my younger sister as well and broke the news to her as well. My sister gave me a lecture, but she said Ricky was calling her and knew it was about this. She said she was going to check up on me later and hung up. She called back and said Ricky was coming to pick me up and that I should go with him. She asked me where was the kids and I said they were at the movies and that Gabby was to pick them up. She wasn't happy about the kids being with her, but in my state of mind, there was nothing we could do. After hanging up, I started to drift off to sleep until I heard my brother Ricky pulling up. Opening the door, I saw my brother walking up to me with a bag and his toolbox in his hands. My brother is a very intimidating looking guy. He used to play football in high school and college, but with his bald head and beard, he looked like he came out of the military. He then walked up to me and gave me a big hug. Me and my brother always played the tough guy role with our feelings, but I was teary-eyed because we both knew this was what I needed. After the hug, he told me he stopped at the store and he bought me new locks for the house. He said the last thing I need was to leave and Gabby come in later and take everything. After an hour of talking and changing the locks, we left to Ricky's house. 
Ricky and his girlfriend treated me great and did their best to cheer me up all weekend. My sister, Gina, came over as well to talk to me. After contacting everybody else in my family, I couldn't help but relive what I saw. I was hoping to catch my wife confess or something like that, but the opportunity to catch her came sooner than I expected. And after she said she didn't love me that way, I just wanted a revenge for how she played me that day. Payback was burning inside me and I was going to take this craziness. I wasn't done with this yet. That Sunday, Gabby's sister actually called me. At first my brother didn't want me to answer, but I had to remind him that my kids were over there. After walking out the room, I answered the call. After picking up the call, the sister let's call her Christina, asked me what was going on. She said her sister wouldn't go back to the house, but didn't want to say why. After telling her the truth that I caught her cheating on me at my job, there were a few seconds of silence. After that, she started denying it, saying that I was lying on her sister. After letting her rant, I told her to hang up and that I was going to show her the proof. She started saying something, but I angrily hung up. After that, I sent her the video and didn't hear from her the rest of the day. After that, had I spent the rest of the day trying to relax. When Monday came, I went to work and went to see my supervisor about Daryl and Gabby. Surprised, he gave me a testimony sheet to make my complaint. While I was filling out the paperwork, he said he was sorry to hear this and asked me was I sure this was happening. Angry, I said yeah, and asked him did he want me to show him the video I took. Surprised, he asked me if I actually had evidence of this and I said yes. Reaching out, he took back the form I was filling out and said it wouldn't be needed anymore. He picked up the phone and talked to somebody about the situation. After he hung up and said he called up the manager and said send the video to his email and he'd take care of it when the boss came to visit the facility in a couple of days. I told him fine, but I wasn't going to come to work for those days and he said he was just about to suggest that. A couple days ago, Gabby's sister Christina finally had called me back and it surprised me. She said she talked to Gabby and Christina wanted me to talk to Gabby that night because the kids wanted to come home. I said I'd take my kids, but I don't want to talk to Gabby because there's nothing to talk about. She said she knows Gabby messed up, but to her, I was supposed to be the more reasonable one and to think about the family. Somehow I felt like I was the unreasonable one. I told her I wasn't talking to her because she cheated with my coworker and embarrassed me at my job. I told Christina she's been bringing another dude in my house and I'm supposed to act like none of this ever happened. She said that's not true, Gabby only messed around with him at the job or at his place. Laughing this off, I said yeah, how do I know that? I said for all I know, she banged Daryl's crew too when she was there. Chris got mad and said that's not what happened. And I said, then what the hell happened? That's when she told me everything Gabby told her, and I'm not going to lie, wish I never blurted that out. Especially since I knew Gabby wouldn't lie to Christina, which is what made it all worse. According to her, when Gabby first met Brianna, Daryl was talking to Brianna, and that she told them she was there to pick me up. While waiting, they started talking, and whenever she came in, they'd be hanging out, waiting for me to come out. Then Chris said after a while, her and Brianna became friends, and she liked hanging out with them during lunch. She said after that, Daryl would start complimenting her, especially about her butt. This surprised her, but she liked the attention. She said she messed up one day because she told Brianna that she found Daryl attractive, and Brianna told him what she said. Chris said after that, he would get too close to her and talk about her inappropriately. After hearing this, she would play it off, but she liked him, and she always thought about it. I pretty much scoffed at this and said why didn't she just tell me because I would have put an end to it. She said she didn't want to because she really liked him and how wild he was acting. I asked her when everything started and Christina acted like she didn't want to tell me, but when I told her I was going to hang up, she had to tell me. She said she doesn't know when, but Gabby told her about a birthday party Brianna's sister was having. I was aware of Brianna's sister and knew she would always find some excuse to get drunk. Brianna invited Gabby to come to the party with her and she did. According to Christina, she said Daryl came to the party too. She said Gabby was surprised to see him there and they hung out and had fun. Christina asked her was he trying to get to her and Gabby said yes. She said that he started dancing with her, but after a while, they started getting aggressive with each other. I asked her what she meant by aggressive, and she said, asked her to twerk for him. She said Gabby turned around and started twerking on him. She said in the tight leggings she was wearing, it was obvious he was loving her twerking and grinding on him. She said after a while, he started kissing on her, and then they started making out. She said after that, they would go out together, and then it started to go too far. When she said that, I asked her what she meant. So far, the red flags were really adding up. She said when Gabby went to go hang out at Daryl's apartment with Brianna, he was trying to be all over her and she let him. Seeing this, Brianna let them be alone and left them in his apartment. Chris said after making out with her, he went down on her. After that, he would always try to go down on her and sometimes she'd stop him. Sometimes she would let him. Then it got to the point where she wouldn't stop him. 
Then he got her to return the favor. I asked Christina, did she return the favor when my kids were around? And she said no. Everything she did was at the job in his apartment. I told Christina I can't believe she did this to me. She said she can't believe it either. She said Gabby told her he just knew what to do and she loved how wild he is. Christina said Gabby thought going down on her was going to be all, but he wanted more. She said one day he turned her around and pinned her against the couch. She said looking back, it was clear the day had come and he got her. Christina told her she should have got up and ran, but she said she couldn't bring herself to do it. And she allowed the chase to end when he got her from the back. Shaking my head, I had to ask again how the hell she could do this to me. She said Gabby said it was all exciting for her, and the fact that it was wrong was exciting as well. Christina said she had always liked how rebellious he was, and when he finally got her, he didn't disappoint. She said he was so eager that she thought the neighbors were going to hear them. I know what she means because when I was younger, me and my brother had to help my aunt move out of one of her apartments. When we were moving things, I heard explosions out of nowhere. Then when we heard machine guns going off, we realized somebody in the apartment below us was watching an action movie or something. It sounded like Vin Diesel or James Bond was living below us. The walls were paper thin, so to speak. If Daryl's apartment was as cheap and as bad as my aunt's, then they could definitely hear Daryl doing Gabby, especially if he was taking her from the back. She said after that, whenever he wanted it, he got it. Until Tyrell said something it was supposed to be their little secret. However, I guess Tyrell was more of a man than they thought. Christina started to continue, but I told the party and the apartment situation was enough. She asked was I going to at least be the level-headed one again and just talk to her and said hell no. I said I'm going to come over there tomorrow and get the kids, but I don't have anything to say to Gabby. She said this isn't going to work if we both act stubborn, but I told her she made a fool of me and I'm never giving her that chance again. I told her when I was coming to get the kids and she groaned and hung up in frustration. I felt pretty low that day. I had to crawl my way back up to where I was. A couple hours after that, I got another call from a number I didn't recognize. After that, they texted me, and I saw it was a coworker I knew, and it surprised me. I was driving at the time and put the call through on my Bluetooth dashboard. He asked me what was up, and I told him I was just running errands. He asked me did I have something to do with Daryl getting fired, and that surprised the F out of me. He said there were two men and a woman in suits that came on the dock with our supervisor. He said they went straight to the back where the trucker's lounge was. Hearing this, I knew that had to be checking the lounge to see if the same room was on the video. After that, he said about 20 minutes later they called Daryl to the office and made him get all his stuff. After that, I told him the truth and he said he would have done the same thing. He asked me when I was coming back and I said I'd come in Friday and work half a day. He said cool and that he'd talk to me later. I was so happy I made dinner for myself that night. Now all I had to really focus on is the divorce. The next day was the day I had to pick up my kids and I kind of dreaded it. It's been days since I saw her and my brother Ricky made sure to be with me just in case. When I got there, my kids actually jumped up and was happy to see me. They said their mother was being mean to them and was ignoring them, so they wanted to come home. Looking over, I saw Gabby in the kitchen on her cell phone with her sister ignoring me. I told them to go ahead and get in my car and my oldest daughter asked, can she bring her iPad with her? When I said yes, Gabby snapped and said no because she told her it had to stay with Gabby. I told Gabby she's not going to lose it because I'd have it. She still said no. She said she bought it, so it stays with her until they come back. My daughter was getting emotionally upset, so I told her to wait in the car. When she walked out, I told her I can't believe she would be this petty. After that, it caused a huge argument, and I didn't hold back this time. I called her a hoe, and she said I was a snitch for getting Daryl fired from his job. I said she claimed she didn't know Daryl like that, and she said, F you, and go cry to my mama. She said I was lucky she looked my way. She said me and Daryl could have fought or something, and I didn't have to get him fired. I said I fight for real women, and thoughts don't get that luxury. After that, called me dusty and real lame, and she don't love a lame guy. Getting angry, I saw a glass with orange juice in it, and I threw the juice at her, and she barely dodged it. Looking at me in shock, she threw a fork at my head, but missed. After all that, we got broken up by my brother, Christina and Christina's friend, who was there. Gabby yelled out she don't need me and kept out yelling, next, next, and my brother practically picked me up and got me on the porch. After calming down, I left because I used up all my energy and I couldn't fight my brother to get back inside. When I got back in the car, I told my daughter her mother took the iPad. She said she didn't care anymore, she just wanted to leave. I couldn't believe what I had to go through back there, and although I was out of line, it still felt good getting to curse her out. 
Right now, my kids are with me and my new locks on the door, it's going to stay that way. I had to break the news to the kids in a child-friendly way that me and their mother won't be living in the same house anymore. They were crushed, but understood. Like I said before, all that was on my agenda now was the divorce papers and the lawyers that I spoke to said the video could help in a lot of arguments. My wife clearly is full of herself and I hope it was all worth it. If she thinks she's going to have a meaningful type of relationship with Daryl, she's delusional. Daryl, or anybody for that matter, is not going to stay with her. She's on her way to being 40 and have a lot of kids. And he's not looking to be the world's best stepdad. If that's what she thinks, then I know Daryl better than she does. Gabby was just some butt to conquer. And when he's done, he's going to get off of it to go to someone else. I'm sure that's going to sink in soon. And I bet it won't even be a year. At least now I can have a peace of mind. But I definitely need to worry and my kids and my real family. Maybe even Christina if she ever wisens up to Gabby's dumb crap. First reaction comes from STXR Light. Gabby thinks she's so special because of her attractiveness that she can go and do whatever crap. She didn't even show a single sign of remorse, rather showed how much of a real witch she is. I hope the divorce goes smoothly. I hope your kids are alright. I hope you're okay. Azuzu88 chimes in. This woman is pushing 40 and yet still has all the maturity of a teenager. She wanted you to fight the other guy rather than get him fired? It's all about her. You fighting him would make her feel wanted and desirable. I can tell you what happens next if OP is smart. They get divorced, the other guy dumps her because now she wants a commitment. She then jumps from one bad guy to another. OP gets primary custody when she can't provide a stable home life. She eventually breaks down and wants to reconcile when her life is crap and the kids no longer want to be around her. Our last reaction comes from Bear the Constipated. The puzzle is finally finished. You did good. Just keep being the best father you can and keep your family close. Your story makes me realize I have someone I need to break it off with. I won't risk being in the same situation. It's for the best. I hope you can move on from this and find peace in your life. Thank you.